All right, we're going to tag team this one. So, and it's Theater Kavanaugh. That's okay, everybody gets it wrong. So, all right, ready to go. So, Theater Kavanaugh was founded by Wendy Stein. Uh, in 2012 as a company that would stage the Jewish experience. Five years and about eight productions later, we're still going strong. Joy Cohn came to see our first show, which was a staged reading of The Chosen, and she approached Wendy about a screenplay that she was working on. That screenplay was Anna's Journal, which Theodore Kavanaugh proudly produced in 2013, turning the script from a screenplay into a stage play was a huge collaborative effort. Uh, Joy was present at all of the rehearsals. There's a lot of pictures of people looking serious, taking notes, listening, listening. Um, she was able to see her characters come to life and make some tweaks along the way. The result was a three-day run of what we came to call an enhanced stage reading with a minimalist set, original music, real-time projection of gesture drawings as they were being created, and a cast of 18 ranging from nine to nearly 80. And, of course, food, because <laughs> food. <laughs> After Anna's Journal came, a number of productions, including our largest production to date, This Little Number, which was directed by Trish Denton, who presented here a few months ago. Um, Brindabar is a story of spiritual, cultural, and physical survival that is perhaps best known for being performed by the ch uh, children of the Theresien concentration camp. And as we were pouring our hearts and souls into Brindabar, some other Burlingtonians were pouring their hearts and souls into the survival of this work, which has come to be known as the Lost Shul Mural, painted in 1910 and rescued from behind sheetrock in 2015. The mural was the creation of this guy, Ben Zion Black, a Jewish Lithuanian immigrant. The more we found out about the mural, the more we felt that it was just begging to be turned into a play. There was a story of immigration, survival, loss, rediscovery with possibly a juicy love story thrown in. That's Ben Zion Black there in his later years with his uh, wife, Rachel Sager Black. So Wendy and I are not playwrights, but fortunately we know somebody who is. So, sounds pretty simple, right? I was handed a lost world and asked to write a play about it. But was this a story about finding a hundred-year-old mural and conserving it? Was it about the artist Ben Zion Black? Was it a story about a town back in Lithuania, kind of a modern take on Fiddler, of immigrants, social justice, and was it a love story? What I found was that it was all of these things and more. I used to teach a graduate course at UVM on the creative process. A 1926 book was one of the earliest studies on creativity, and it discusses the creative process in four stages. During the preparation stage, kind of like doodling, this is one of Ben Zion Black's doodles, the problem is investigated in all directions as the thinker readies the mental soil for the sowing of seeds. It's the accumulation of intellectual resources out of which to construct the new ideas. It's fully conscious and entails part research, part planning, part entering a right frame of mind and attention. I read and I researched. I spent days in the basement of UVM special collections. I interviewed. I learned about Burlington's history, the Yiddish literary scene in New York and Paris. I became privy to the secret world of women's underground altern alternative prayers originating in the 1500s. And I even tried out recipes from a kosher cafe that Marc Chagall had used, used to frequent. The next stage is incubation, the mental mastication, as Lewis Carroll advocated for. I spent a lot of time walking around the old North End, past where Ben Zion Black used to live. And that's Steph Cooper, who's from New York City. She's our Yiddish translator for Zion, uh, Ben Zion Black's poetry. I passed old synagogues and shops. I imagined and was transported to the smells and sounds and sights of the Little Jerusalem in 1910. To an outside observer, it might have seemed that I wasn't being very productive. To me and my process, these slow walks were as important, if not more, than putting my hands on the keyboard. Illumination is what follows. All my research and all the unconscious and conscious ruminations led to flashes and clicks, what Stephen J. Kould called trains of associations. Ah, yes, that is the story. It is the day before the mural is supposed to be finished. What's at stake? What's at stake if it gets done? What's at stake if it is not finished? That story crosses time and cultures. It really is the simplest story. It's the story we all share of our fears and hopes and the human condition. 
the verification stage. I took the solid foundation of my research and I looked at each character, what they needed, what they wanted, what was in their way, and the story unfolded. I wrote a first draft. Skilled actors read it at Playmakers and at a private reading. It was looking pretty good, but I needed to rewrite. And so it goes. Rewrites, more readings, feedback. The creative process isn't linear. The stage is overlapped. There is interplay. A few weeks ago, we hosted at two events at the Fletcher Free Library in which community members came and shared their stories of what they carried from their culture and what they left behind. Oh, that. I had to add another layer. Right now, as I explain the story in this format, in this moment, I'm experiencing more clarity. When in a few weeks I see and hear our skilled actors directed at the stage reading, those feelings will combine with the impressions from tonight which will combine with my grandma Eva's challah recipe and the way the crab apple is blossoming over on Hyde Street. And then I will know how to fine tune the script until it's finished. I'm so grateful for this incredible opportunity that Theater Kavanaugh have given me. It's been an amazing collaboration. They've been given me much guidance in the development of this play. It sure does take a village. Like Ben Zion Black, I hope to create something that will carry my culture, will have meaning, and ultimately be a story of survival. All right. Through this process, uh, we learned that Ben Zion Black's creation has meaning far beyond Burlington. His mural is actually the best surviving example of the type of artwork uh, that decorated not, um, synagogues of Europe um, prior to the destruction in World War II. Um, we're going to be showing a film called Raise the Roof a week from tonight um, that explores that world. And that brings us to the main event, a staged reading of Joy's new work um, entitled Of the Better Kind. It's going to be the weekend of May 19th through the 21st at Main Street Landing Black Box Theater. On Saturday night, we will be offering an extra show with music and food, because food. <laughs> and in addition to the next steps entailed in the full production of The Better Kind, I just wanted to share, I'm also um, looking to produce the film version of the screenplay of Anna's Journal, published by two recently completed novels, one that takes place in 1937, and a youth fiction novel about soccer, samosas, and survival. So be in touch if you have any interest, and thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you.